inverse matrices. And starting off with inverse matrices, what we want to do is just kind of define how we're going to be labeling a few things. First of all, we're going to use capital letters here to denote a matrix. Lowercase would simply denote a number. Now the multiplicative identity, let's first define what that is. For numbers, the multiplicative identity is simply 1. And the reason why is because that's the value that you could times to anything without actually changing what you had in the beginning. A times 1, for example, is A. For a matrix, we use I to denote that. So matrix A times I would equal to A. I representing the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix. A 2 by 2 matrix would have 1's across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Same holds true for a 3 by 3 in which again 1's across the forward diagonal and then zeros everywhere else as with the 4 by 4 and so on and so forth. Again, multiplying by this matrix will simply give you the original matrix that you had to start with. Okay, real quickly about inverses. For a matrix, we denote the, ma the inverse of a matrix with the negative 1 symbol there. And you can think of it as an exponent in a sense, except you won't be writing 1 over A. If you're just talking about numbers, that's another issue. 5 times the inverse of 5, that's really 1 over 5, is equal to 1. For a matrix, we kind of use the same idea, except we wouldn't be able to divide by a matrix. Technically, you have 5 to the negative 1, that's 1 over 5, so you are in a sense dividing 5 into 5. You won't be dividing A into A, so we just simply use the inverse for it. Thus, A times A inverse, or A inverse times A, is equal to 1. I'm sorry, the identity matrix, which has 1's along your diagonal. Let's do a matrix equation. If you get an ordinary equation and you wanted to solve for x on this, you would just simply divide by a. This is fine with real numbers, except these are matrices, so we can't do that. We can't divide. So let's do this a little differently. Instead of dividing by a, what you will do is you will multiply by its inverse. On the left-hand side, we obviously would not do it this way. You would not go a times matrix x and then multiply to the matrix of A inverse. Therefore, you would instead multiply it on the left. A inverse times A would give you the identity matrix. And the identity times X would just simply give you X. On the right-hand side, we wouldn't do it like this. We wouldn't go B times A inverse. We have to be very picky. Please note that over here on the left, you multiply the inverse to the left-hand side. So, this actually should be over here. We want this to be on the left-hand side as well. Therefore, x will equal to a inverse times b. That's your solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this. All right, solve for x. x is a matrix, so we can expect a lot of multiple numbers on the inside. Notice that this echoes this format here, in that this would represent matrix A here. And then this is x, and this would represent matrix B. If you're going to solve this by, uh, for x, you would multiply both sides by the inverse. So that would be the inverse times a, and then the inverse times b. Keep in mind that since it's on the left-hand side here, you'll put it on the left-hand side on the uh, other side as well with b. a inverse times a it just simply gives us the identity. Therefore, the solution to the matrix X is simply A inverse times B. So let's say we determine the inverse of A. This matrix, its inverse is determined to be this. Then what you would do simply is you would multiply that to matrix B. Again, the order in which we would do this matters. We wouldn't have this one go second. It wouldn't be over here. Remember, that's not how we work this out. Since you multiplied it on the left to make this A go away, it's on the left here as well. So we want this on this side. Just go ahead and multiply those. Recall the way you go is row in the first matrix, columns in the second matrix. 
So you would take this first row and multiply to both columns to get your solution. And then the second row multiplied to both columns as well. And then that would be your solution. Let's determine the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix first of all. If you're given matrix A, and matrix A is just simply equal to this, A, B, C, D, in this array, then the inverse of matrix A would be this. Now this looks a little convoluted, but don't worry, we will decipher this. Let's first start off with this fraction here in front. What will happen is when you get this fraction, you'll just simply multiply it to every single term on the inside. The denominator of this fraction is as a result of the diagonals here. This forward diagonal is a times d, that's this part. b times c is the backwards diagonal. So what about the values on the inside here? Well, these first two values, a and d, have simply switched places. You can see that the d is no longer down here, it's up here. Same thing for the a. So those two, again, they just switch places. b and c sw simply switch uh, signs. So instead of a b, it'll be a negative b. And by the way, if these values were already negative, you'd switch them to positive. So it's all about the diagonals, essentially. Let's work an example. Determine the inverse of this matrix A. This is the skeleton of it. Let's first worry about the denominator here. Multiply those on the forward diagonal, that's 8 times 1. Then on the backwards diagonal, 6 times negative 1. That would give us 14 here for the denominator. So what about the inside? Recall that these two values will simply switch places. As for the other diagonal, they would simply switch signs. Almost done now. All we got to do now is take this, that's 1 over 14. We will take 1 over 14 and simply multiply to each and every single minor on the inside. And what that essentially means is that you're going to take all of these values and put 14 underneath. So therefore, after you've reduced your fractions, what you get is this. And that's your answer for the inverse. A 3x3 three three matrix takes a lot more work, and the strategy is a little different. There is a formula for it, however, the formula is cumbersome to remember, so it's best that you understand the process since you can apply it to bigger matrices as well, like 4x4, 5x5, etc. Basically what you want to do is you want to augment the identity matrix. That is, you'll take matrix A and attach the identity matrix. And then you'll transform it using several row operations so that the identity is no longer on the right-hand half. It'll be on the left-hand half. Once you've accomplished that, whatever result you get on the right-hand half, that's your inverse. Let's work an example. Okay, in writing the inverse of this matrix, the first thing you want to do is augment the identity matrix. So I rewrote it over here, only I wrote the identity matrix at the end. I'm using a line to kind of separate the two halves, but really, we're, we're not going to really look at that line. So what you want to do is you want to make this look like the identity matrix. Note the big property of the identity matrix is that you got zeros down here. So what you want to do then is you want to rewrite this in triangle form. What we want to do first is target this 2. We want to zero that out, so we'll combine this with row 1. We'll multiply it by negative 2 and then combine here. So that's negative 2 times row 1. Combine with row 2, and together what you'll get is this. What you're going to do then is you're going to take these numbers and you're going to replace the second row. How come? Because the 2 here in the second row is what you wanted to replace with 0. So you replace all the other numbers as well. We also want to replace 4 here and make that a 0. So we're, again, we're targeting this column first with these two different row operations. I will uh, multiply negative 2 to row 2 and then combine with row 3. You could also combine this with row 1 instead. 
doesn't matter. So here we are, here's the result. Again, this first part here, that replaces that second row. The third row is the result of negative 2 times row 2 combined with row 3. Now you want to zero this value out if it's, if it's not already zeroed out. So you'll combine this third row with the second row. That would mean multiplying this second row by 2 and then this third row by 5. Since you want to zero out the 2 in this third row, the result is going to replace the entire row. So why don't we go ahead and try that out. If you do that, what you should get is this. So note, everything here is the same, first and second row, but this third row has been changed because we had to zero this out. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is we now want to zero uh, in this triangle here. In other words, we want triangle form going the other way. First thing we want to do is target these two values right here. To do that, you will combine both of these rows with row 3. It is essentially re reversed in the way we approach this. Row 3 is going to remain unchanged. Row 2 will change as the result of combining this row and then same thing here. To combine this, what you would do is you would multiply by 3 to the third row and then combine with the first row. In the case of row 2, you would combine negative, you would multiply negative 3 to this third row before combining. Again, you'll want to use the third row here as your reference for zeroing these two values out. The reason for this is because of the zeros here. These zeros basically means that when you multiply, say, the 3, it's not going to change these values. And therefore, when you combine, say, with row 2, you won't change this value into something else that isn't 0. We want to keep this the same. Okay, so there we are. Now let's go ahead and finish this up. We still need a 0 here. Therefore, to 0 out this negative 6, you're going to combine this first row with row 2. It is only row 2, because if you tried to use row 3, consider, you'd have to multiply 0 by something to get 6. So that way, when you combine with negative 6 to get 0, there is nothing you could multiply to 0 to make it into a 6. Just can't happen. That's why you're only left with row 2 as your option. That means 6 times row 2, and then combined with row 1 multiplied by 5. All right, almost done. All we got to worry about now are the diag is the diagonal. This diagonal, in order for it to look like the identity, should have nothing but 1s. If it's already got a 1, that's fine. But if not, then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply. For the second row, since you want the 5 to be a 1, you'll multiply by 1 over 5 to every single value. That's 0 times 1 fifth, 5 times 1 fifth, 10 times 1 fifth, negative 35, 15, all multiplied to 1 fifth. Or in other words, just divide everything by 5. For the third row, you divide everything by negative 1. Once you've done that, you would just simply replace all those values. So once you've done that, then what you get is this. And that essentially finishes it off. Now that we have the identity on the left-hand side, these values that you have on the right, that's your inverse. Therefore, there's your answer. Let's put into context how we use this. Let's say you were going to solve this system using an inverse matrix. First, write it in AX equals B form. There you are. This is your matrix A, which essentially is the coefficients. X, Y, and Z are the variables. And we can write it like this, because if you were to multiply this matrix to this matrix, this row to this column would reproduce this part. The constants are over here on the right-hand side. Recall that x is equal to a inverse b. That's as, that's as a result of multiplying both sides by the inverse. Let's say we figured out the inverse on our own. If we did that, 
then we multiply that inverse to both sides. Remember, it's on the left-hand side. This first part on the left, it simply gives us the identity, so there's no need to do that multiplication. Therefore, you'd focus your energies just on this right-hand side here. You would multiply the rows of this first matrix to the column of this second matrix. Therefore, what we would get is this. So essentially what that means is that x is 3, y is 1, and z is negative 4. And that is how you would solve this system. Solving systems really is just one way in which you can apply the inverses of matrices. In any case, that's really it for this lesson. I hope that works for you.